Hello, and welcome to True Crime Sleep Stories. I am your guest host, Courtney. And I am also your guest host, Amanda. And we are both from A Nefarious Nightmare. Now, settle in and get cozy, because we are about to tell you a bedtime story. Despite the word nightmare in our name, we want to just lull you to sleep, off to dreamland, you know, get all comfy and cozy in your bed. Make sure you keep the AC or heat to a comfortable temperature, just to promote sleepiness. Now we do hope you listen though, because this story does have a moral to it. If you find that our nefarious story will indeed give you nightmares, well, don't say we didn't warn you. This is where I normally recommend our hot cocoa, hot tea, hot toddy, or really any beverage that warms the soul. But, well... We are talking about the Pappin sisters today, so maybe double down on those things. Of course, maybe avoid melatonin because it tends to exacerbate nightmares in some folks. And if you need a hug and a reassuring word to help you drift off to sleep, you can email Courtney at a nefarious nightmare <laughs> at gmail.com. I don't know why Amanda didn't include herself, but that's all right. I'm happy to be your friend in this trying time. Also, please note that we are on Twitter at a nefarious pod, on Instagram at nefarious nightmare pod, and searchable by a nefarious nightmare pretty much everywhere else. Now bundle up, it's time to start this story. The parents of the Pappen sisters were considered evil as they come. The mom apparently cared very little for her children. There was abuse, and while not much is known about Amelia, she was sexually assaulted by her abusive father. She left shortly after that to become a nun in a monastery. So there are a total of three Pappen sisters, and all of them have had a rough upbringing. The oldest sister was Amelia, and there's not much else known about her since she didn't participate in any of these crimes. Then came Christine, who was six and a half years older than the youngest, Leah. Despite their significant age gap, as you all will see, these two were very close. Some have mistaken them to be twins. Christine and Leah Pappen eventually got a job working as domestic servants for a retired lawyer, Renee Lanson, his wife, Leonie, and their grown daughter, Genevieve. The Lanslins lived in a beautiful two-story townhome in the city of Le Mans on number 6 Rue Boyer, this family was particularly affluent and outsiders considered them a nice family who treated the sisters well. They ate the same food as the family, lived in a heated room, and were paid the standard wages of the time. It's been thought, at least by the locals, that the family was very pleased with the job that the sisters did around the home, and the Lancelins were envied by every French upper-class household for having such dedicated and hard-working domestic help. The sisters were coveted by all. Unfortunately, however, things aren't always as they seem on the outside. Now inside the Lancelin household, the sisters had been treated as though they didn't belong. For example, Rene Lancelin ignored them for the entire seven years that they worked for him. It was as though they were beneath him. Instead, any task they had been given was given by the wife, and even at that, it was written. Leone was a demanding and extremely privileged force around the house, demanding perfection as she routinely performed quote-unquote white glove tests on furniture to confirm that the furniture had been dusted and cleaned correctly. At some point, it has to feel demeaning. On an eerily dark and extremely stormy day, the mother and daughter were to return home from a shopping trip and go directly to the home of Leonie's brother. Rene planned to meet them there and the family were not expected home by the sisters until late that evening. The sisters were given orders to run errands, one of which was to pick up an iron from the repair shop. When the iron was plugged into the electrical outlet, it then blew a fuse. They were afraid of what would happen if the mishap were to be found out, but expecting the affluent family to return later, they decided to wait until the morning to try to repair the fuse. But as luck would have it, the mother and daughter came home early. According to Christine, the mother flew into an intense rage 
when she was told that the iron was still broken and that the electricity was out. Christine then smashed a pewter jug onto the mother's head. Thwack! Then her daughter started to attack Christine. This is where things get even more violent. Christine has had enough at this point because she allegedly shouted, quote, I am going to massacre them, end quote. Leah then rushed down from the attic and attacked the mother. Thwack, thwack, thwack. Smash her head into the ground and tear her eyes out, Christine would scream. Leah is believed to be the impressionable of the two, and of course followed Christine's orders, and proceeded to tear Genevieve's eyes from her face. Then, since the mother and daughter were now freshly without sight, the sisters grabbed a hammer, a knife, and a pewter pot and struck blows. Thwack! 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 Until the mom and daughter fell silent. They then disrobed the bottom half of the two and began cutting into their buttocks and thighs. Once all of this was said and done, the sisters basted the mother with her own daughter's period blood. The sisters then bathed, locked every door in the house, lit one candle in their room, and waited for the inevitable. Rene, now concerned when his wife and daughter failed to show up for dinner, returned home with one of his friends. They returned to all the doors locked and the house is pitch black. Rene then contacted the police who broke into the townhouse. The sisters were found naked in bed together and immediately confessed to the double murder. They claimed that it was self-defense. Christine Pappen said, quote, it was her or us, end quote. And Leah told police, quote, from now on, I am deaf and dumb, end quote. This case attracted a ton of attention from intellectuals of the time. They argued that the murders were the manifestation of the class struggle. They believed that they were treated poorly, considered their bosses to be mean-spirited, and thus the girls rebelled. This seemed to be reflected in the poor conditions under which the people who worked as servants to the rich lived. The defense considered the Pappins temporarily insane during the time of murder. They used the following examples. They had a cousin who died in an asylum, a grandfather prone to violent attacks of temper, and an uncle who had committed suicide as evidence of a hereditary disposition towards insanity. Psychologists later argued in the aftermath of the trial that the Pappin sisters suffered folia du, the condition of shared psychosis. This can typically be seen in twins, although it's somewhat rare. The symptoms of the shared psychosis included hearing voices, a sense of persecution, and capability of inciting violence in perceived self-defense against imagined threats, as well as inappropriate expressions of sexuality. Those with this particular type of paranoia often focus on a matron figure as a persecutor, which would be Madame Lanzelin in this case. In this type of affliction, one half of the pair will often dominate the other, as Christine dominated Leah. Paranoid schizophrenia can be difficult to diagnose as the paranoid person can appear quite normal, which is how the sisters likely seemed normal and innocent during the trial. It was ultimately decided that the Pappin sisters were of sound mind and therefore seemed guilty. Christine Pappin was sentenced to be put to death by guillotine in the public square on September 30th, 1933. Leah Pappin was considered an accomplice and was given a lighter sentence of 10 years of hard labor. Christine waited in the holding cell for her punishment and became unhinged. She tried to claw her own eyes out. She was then put in a straitjacket while her sentence was commuted to life. She then passed away in 1937 as a result of starving herself. Leah, however, was released in 1941 on good behavior. She served a total of eight years. She then went on to reside with her mother and lived a long and quiet life under anonymity. The Pappin sisters were thought to be treated as an appalling nature as they were considered to be servants of a wealthy French family. This story was a vital mark in French history and woke people up to the notion of class struggle. On February 2nd of 1933, Christine and Leah Pappin committed one of the most horrific murders in France's history, 
prominent intellectuals like Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, and Jean Genet held up the crime as an example of class warfare. The Papin sisters will live infamously as their crimes and their life story are both horrific and fascinating. These two ripped out the eyes of their victims, which rendered their faces unrecognizable, and they also mutilated their genitals. Their victims were the affluent family that employed them, Leonie and Genevieve Lanzelin. These two were mother and daughter, respectively. As you drift off to sleep, know the moral of this story. Treat those who serve you well, because you never know if a turkey baster is hanging around somewhere. I'm Courtney Fenner. And I'm Amanda Cronin. And this has been tonight's True Crime Sleep Story. Be sure to find a nefarious nightmare wherever you get podcasts. Good night. Sleep tight. And And don't don't let let the the monsters monsters bite. bite.